Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, longest strictly increasing or strictly decreasing subarray. So as the problem states, uh, we're basically given an input array of numbers. So I'll draw it over here. And among all of the possible uh, subarrays, so a subarray is like a contiguous part of the original array, we want to find the longest one that is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So what do they mean by that? Well, consider this subarray. We have the value one and then we have the value four. So they are in increasing order. If we had a one, after the one, these are equal. Maybe we have a two after that. You could say that these are in non-decreasing order, but technically these two are equal and then it increases. So they're definitely not in strictly increasing order. So we care about the ones that are strictly increasing. This does not count. The opposite is also true. We can consider arrays that are strictly decreasing. So consider this array over here, this subarray three and then two these go in a decreasing order so of course the brute force way would be to get every single possible subarray there are n squared of them so we could build them like this and then that and then that so in some sense you could say that we're starting at this element trying to consider every possible subarray starting from here that is either strictly increasing or decreasing now it's possible that like from here we can consider the entire input array Maybe they are in increasing order or decreasing order, but probably we're gonna have to stop early. In this case, we stop here because when we get to this part, now there's an issue. We started with one element. One element is like the base case. That is technically in either increasing or decreasing order because it's just one element. But when we see the next element that's adjacent to it, now the state of our subarray has changed. Now it has become an increasing order subarray. So now we expect that any following element is also gonna be in increasing order. But as soon as it's not, then we stop. We are not gonna continue past this point. We already found the longest possible subarray that we could have starting from here. So while we could in like a brute force solution, then start from this element, try to go as far as we could. Next, start from this, go as far as we could. I'll show you a way to eliminate some of the repeated work. So we ended up stopping here. This was the last valid subarray. That doesn't mean that the next subarray actually has to start over here. Why can't we consider this element? We can. Because like I said, a single element by itself is always going to be valid. So now that this element is in decreasing order, we have a subarray of length two that is in decreasing order. And then we could kind of continue from here. This value is not in decreasing order though. So once again, we would have to restart. And this time we would start with a subarray of length one. And then we'd kind of keep going. Now we see that these are in decreasing order. So now the state has become a decreasing order subarray. So the way I'm going to code this up is by having a variable, which is going to be called increasing. Initially, it's actually going to be zero. That tells us that we do not know what the state is, because right now we have a subarray of length one. Technically, we can allow it to be in increasing order or decreasing order. Next, I'm going to look at the element. I'm going to do the comparison. This one is greater. So I'm gonna look at the state of my increasing variable. It's zero, so that allows us to create an increasing order subarray. So I'm gonna change this to be one now. One, the fact that it's positive means that our subarray is in increasing order. So we expect the next value to also be in increasing order. When we see that it is not in increasing order, and in fact, it's actually in decreasing order, that's an issue for us because that doesn't match our current state. So we would have to reset our subarray. We're actually not gonna reset it just to a length one subarray over here. The way I'm gonna code this up is I'm actually gonna reset it now to be a length two subarray, that's this. And I'm also gonna update the state of my increasing to now be a negative one. Negative one tells me that this is in decreasing order. Next, I'm gonna see this element, it's three. Okay, now these are equal. So this time I actually can't create a subarray of length two because we can't have equal elements. So now I'm gonna restart with a subarray of length one and I'm gonna reset my increasing variable back to zero because that tells me now we could either be an increasing or a decreasing subarray. I know that was a lot of talking, so I'll just end this by saying the solution is gonna be linear time and constant space. Let me just code it up for you. I think it'll make more sense that way. So I will warn you that there are shorter ways to code this up, but since this is an easy problem, I think it's best to just show you the easiest way to code it up, logically speaking. 
like the code that I'm going to show you is going to be pretty trivial. It's just not going to be the cleanest. So current is going to keep track of the length of our current subarray. Result is going to be the maximum subarray. We know that the input is never going to be empty. So we can initialize these variables to be one. We will end up returning the result. And like I said, we're going to have that increasing variable which tracks the state of our current subarray. So then I'm going to start looping. I'm actually going to start at one because I want to do this comparison. I want to be able to compare the previous element at i minus one with the current element at i. And if I started at zero, this would have given me an index out of bounds. This is one case. They're in increasing order. The other case is that they are in decreasing order. And the last case is that they are equal. After handling each of these, whatever our current variable happens to be, we want to potentially update the result with it. So this is where the code is gonna get messy. So if the elements are in increasing order, there's two cases. Either our increasing variable is greater than one, in that case, or, or sorry, greater than zero. In that case, our array was already increasing. So by having one more element that's in increasing order, we can just increment the length of our current subarray by one. I think that's easy enough to handle. The other case is that our array was not in increasing order. It could have been like zero or it could have been in decreasing order. Either way, we have now two elements that are in increasing order. So we can set the length of our current subarray to be two and we can change the state of increasing to be uh, true as well, in a sense, by setting it to one. And this other part here, where they're in decreasing order, is gonna be handled pretty much the same way. I'm just gonna copy and paste this code because I can change this now to be the other way. If this is less than zero, that means it was already uh, decreasing, so we can just increment the length by one. Otherwise, we will set current to two, and we can set increasing to negative one to state that now the current subarray is decreasing. In the last case, else, this is when they're equal. That's when we have to set current to be one and we could reset increasing back to zero. I know that there are ways to shorten this code, but I'll just leave that as an exercise for you. I mean, it is an easy problem, so you gotta challenge yourself in some ways. So let me run this and you can see here it works. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more and I'll see you soon.